I don't recognize you, but I sense that you're one of us. Who are you? The last of the Nightingale Sentinels, I'm afraid. I've defended the Sepulchre alone for what seems like an eternity. We were betrayed by one of our own kind. In fact, I'm to blame for what's happened here. I was blinded. Blinded by dark treachery masquerading as friendship. Perhaps if I had been more vigilant, then Mercer Frey wouldn't have lured me to my fate and stolen the Skeleton King. I haven't heard that name in a long time. How do you know of me? The key! You have the Skeleton Key! I never thought I'd see it again. And Mercer Frey? Then... It's over, and my death wasn't in vain. I owe you a great deal, Nightingale. You've done the Guild a great deed, and although they may not show it, I'm certain they appreciate your sacrifices. My only regret is that you had to undertake this task alone. Carlia? She's still alive? I feared she'd befallen the same fate, ending up a victim of Mercer's betrayal. Nothing would bring me more pride than to return the key, but I'm afraid it's impossible. From the moment I arrived here, I felt myself, well, dying. The Sepulchre isn't merely a temple or a vault to house the key. Within these walls is the Ebonair, a conduit to Nocturnal's realm of Everglow. When Mercer stole the key, that conduit closed, severely limiting our ties to her. I'm afraid so. I'm weakening, and I can feel myself slipping away. The years without restoration of my power have taken their toll. Whatever damage has been caused can only be corrected by following the Pilgrim's path to the Ebonair and replacing the key. With the Ebonair closed and their sudden severance from the realm of Everglow, I fear they've undergone a drastic change. They're shadows of their former selves. They no longer remember their true purpose or their original identities. My spirit didn't manifest itself in the Sepulchre immediately, so fortunately I wasn't present when the Ebon Mirror was sealed. However, ever since that day, I've felt my power waning, slowly draining away. The Ebon Mirror is a conduit through which nocturnal influences our world. Not through magic or blessings, but purely through luck. Yes, absolutely. Your skill is your own. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. But Nocturnal, she influences our luck. Nearly imperceptible assistance we get when we ply our trade. Think about the guild. About the state it was in when you began. Think about all the little things you might have heard. A pick breaking when it shouldn't have. The clouds in the nighttime sky clearing at the wrong moment. Our access to those bits of luck are what separates us from common bandits. Precisely. There are a few who still call nocturnal Lady Luck. And for good reason. I wish I could help you, but I've been a prisoner in this very chamber for the last quarter century. The only possible help I've come across are the remains of some poor fellow who is trying to follow in your footsteps. Perhaps his journal can help? 
Whatever is affecting the Nightingale Sentinels is starting to affect me, too. As I get closer to the Ebonmere, I begin to feel myself slipping away. Even right this moment, I feel strange, when I don't think I should be feeling anything at all. Good luck, Nightingale. to see you again, friend. So, shall be troubling you. I'll listen. Dirt. Well, well. I was looking for this little beauty. Yeah. If you happen to cross any other unusual trinkets like this, be sure to bring him to me. I promise it'll be worth the effort. By the eight, you actually got your hands on it. This alone is worth more than some thieves earn in a lifetime. Don't muck this up. So, stick with me, and he'll never even know you're there. No killing or no pain. Remember that. Sure, we can talk for a minute.
I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Let's see here. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Yes, my friend. How may I help?
comes for you now. No! No!
Once again, the key has been stolen, and a champion returns it to the Sepulchre. Now that the Ebonmir has been restored, you stand before me awaiting your accolades. A pat on your head, a kiss on your cheek. What you fail to realize is your actions were expected, and represent nothing more than the fulfillment of your agreement. Don't mistake my tone for displeasure. After all, you've obediently performed your duties to the letter. But we both know this has little to do with honor and oaths and loyalty. It's about the reward, the prize. Fear not. You'll have your trinkets, your desire for power, your hunger for wealth. I bid you to drink deeply from the Ebonmere mortal, for this is where the Agent of Nocturnal is born. The oath has been struck, the die has been cast, and your fate awaits you in the Everglow. Farewell, my dear. See to me that you stay this time, won't you? I'm glad you were able to bring the key back safely. Nocturnal seemed quite pleased with your efforts. I wouldn't take that to heart. It's her way. Think of her as a scolding mother continually pushing you harder to be successful, outwardly sounding angry, but silently content. I assure you, had she been displeased with you, we wouldn't be having this conversation. The circles at the base of the Ebonmere imbue you with powers befitting a Nightingale Agent. The Crescent Moon represents the Agent of Shadow, the Half Moon for the Agent of Subterfuge, and the Full Moon for the Agent of Strife. This is Nocturnal's way of maintaining balance. If you ever feel the need to change your abilities, you can return to the Sepulchre and step onto a different circle. Be warned that once you've chosen, you can't reselect for at least a day. Now, your life as a Nightingale begins. Should the need arise, you'll be summoned to the Sepulchre in order to defend it. The Guild has welcomed me back with open arms. I feel like a void in my life has finally been filled. I only hope that this isn't an ending to things, but actually the beginning. Why, back. There are pockets brimming with coin, and coffers overflowing with riches ripe for the picking. We may be nightingales, but in our hearts we're still thieves, and we're damn good at what we do. The Agent of Subterfuge utilizes Shadow to cloud the judgment of those around him. By weaving the darkness to their will, this Agent can manipulate others into fighting for the Nightingale for a limited time. This agent of strife can send forth a tendril of pure darkness into the heart of another, causing great injury to them. At the same time, this tether will bolster the agent's own life force, making him stronger. The agent of stealth is the master of remaining unseen. They are able to manipulate the darkness and use it to their advantage. On moonlit nights or in darkened rooms, this agent literally becomes invisible. Choose your path, and your journey will be complete. Carlyle? Gallus! I fear 
feared I would never see you again. I was afraid you'd become like the others. If it were not for the actions of this Nightingale, your fears would have come true. He honors us all. What will you do now, my love? Nocturnal calls me to the Everglow. My contract has been fulfilled. Will I ever see you again? When your debt to Nocturnal has been paid, we'll embrace once again. Farewell, Gallus. Eyes open. Walk with the shadows. Goodbye, Carlyle. Yes, Nightingale? What is it? Gallus's oath has been paid. His actions have satisfied the terms. Now his spirit becomes one with the Everglow, the realm of perpetual twilight and the cradle of shadow. No, not gone. He's become one with the shadows. This is the greatest honor a Nightingale can possibly achieve. In death, he's become a part of that which we use to live. Absolutely. When we say, walk with the shadows, we are asking those Nightingales who have passed on to protect us. It's believed that they are literally what guides our uncanny luck, by placing their hands in ours. That's why the Ebonmere needed to be reopened. Without it, there's no way Nocturnal was able to allow them through. If this place is in danger ever again, the shadows will call. Should the need arise, a portal connects the Sepulchre and Nightingale Hall. Use it whenever you wish. I've decided to make my home at Nightingale Hall. Since it's your home as well, I hope to see you and Brynjolf there. Of course, I may visit some of Skyrim cities to acquire things from time to time. Can't afford to get rusty now, can we? She's the mistress of night and darkness, and the patron of every thief in Tamriel. Nocturnal isn't one for worship and reverence. There are no priests and no sermons, no services, and no arms. She influences our luck, and in return, demands payment. You're closer to understanding than you realize. The only difference is she doesn't demand payment in the traditional sense. And sometimes the cost can be quite high. Whether you know it or not, Nocturnal dictates how well we perform as rogues. Again, you have to think differently. Haven't you ever noticed how our luck behaves? Like a novice picking an impossible lock, or a blind man suddenly turning to face you as you reach for his pocket? It's through these subtle means that Nocturnal influences us. Farewell. Eyes open, and walk with the shadows.